So I thought I'd do a video on navigation. Uh, before we get onto the map and the compass, and also the key components, then a little bit of my personal thoughts anyway, um, why navigation is so important. Excuse me for looking down, but I've got notes underneath so I don't forget anything. So, you know, there's a lot of people that just go out there and walk on paths and think, why do I need to navigate? 99 times out of 100, you don't. But Dartmoor is very, very well known for its changing weather and changing rapidly. You'd be out on the path, you can still get lost. So, basic navigation skills, you know, worth having. Also, if you're going to go out and do actual, you know, the proper walking across the moors, across open moorlands, you have to be able to navigate. No questions, no ifs, no buts, you have to be able to navigate. So, learn the skills. And why do you need to navigate? Obvious ones, you know, you need to know where you're going. If you're going to walk a route, you need to know how to find from point to point. But, you know, if you get lost, if you know where you are and you can navigate, you can get yourself out of that situation. Or, worst case scenario, if you get lost and you have to call for help, call Dartmoor Rescue, for example, then you can tell them your location, or at least your rough location, and they can find you pretty easily. No good phone with Dartmoor Rescue and going, um, yeah, hello, I'm on Lost on Dartmoor. You know, Dartmoor Rescue are very, very good and very professional, but they need a little bit more information than that. So, without further ado, let's move on, shall we? So, phase one of this video, the map, by far the most important navigation tool. Obviously, to do full-on navigation, you need a map and a compass. But there's no point having a compass with a map if you can't use a map in the first place. So map, I think, is most important. Also, on days of clear visibility, you don't even need a compass. I'll go out walking quite happily all day on clear visibility and just use a map. I will not even take the compass out of my pocket or my bag or wherever I seem to have stored it. Um, so learn the map first. OS, the most common map. Um, I would say uh, the most well known, what I always use, so that's what we're going to concentrate on in this video. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated right? because maps are obviously broken down uh, from, from big, big areas uh, going down smaller and smaller to more accurately pinpoint your position. So they start on a 500 meter by 500 meter square system labeled A through to Z, but negating the letter I. This covers a vast, vast area far bigger than Great Britain. And the 500 kilometer by 500 kilometer square is broken down into 2500 kilometer by 100 kilometer squares. They follow the same system of A through to Z and negating the letter I. So you can now break down from you know that 500 kilometers squared, you're in the letter S, for example, to run Dartmoor. Then within the letter S, you are in X. So your 100 kilometer by 100 kilometer region is SX or Sierra X-ray. Then we go into numbers. So like I said, uh, we now know that we are in the Sierra X-ray square of Ordnance Survey, which means that we are accurate to 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers. That accurate is probably the wrong word. <laughs> That's a fair big area, isn't it? So we, we want to get more accurate. We want to come down in scale and pinpoint our location more. So now we move into numbers. Now, each of the two letter squares, so Sierra X-ray and what have you, are then broken down into numbers. So Sierra X-ray is 0 to 100 in Eastings and 0 to 100 in Northings. 
Now, Eastings and Northings, this is important, very, very important, because taking grid references, you need to, to, to differentiate between the two. Northings and Eastings, then. Now, this is um, <laughs> a little bit confusing, but on your map, you've got grid lines. Like so, excuse the drawing. The way I like to remember it is look at the numbers. So numbers will be something like Right. Whatever way the numbers are going, the direction they're going, so these are going one, two, three, that way, they're pushing, they're, they're striding towards, they're adventuring towards the east. So they're eastings. Vice versa, these are adventuring towards the north, so they're northings. Right. The other way, um, which I know a lot of people use this uh, to remember it, when taking grid references is along the corridor and up the stairs so when taking a grid reference obviously these numbers are also at the bottom one two three so you're along the corridor so your first number is there then you go up the stairs for your second number so this obviously means if you want to find say for example this square here then you come along the corridor so your first number is three, then go up the stairs. Second number is three. That crosses in grid reference three, three. Similarly, let's go for that one. Along the corridor, first number is one. Up the stairs, two. Grid reference, one, two. That's obviously a two-digit grid reference. Uh, later in the video, we'll be going into more detail and more like grid references. Right, so we're getting there. We're getting down to the smaller and smaller areas. Um, I know this is, we might be tracking on a little bit, but it's important to understand right from the start, right down to the finish, I think, personally, anyway, uh, so you've got a complete understanding of, of how maps work. So we've gone from a 500 by 500 kilometre square which is obviously in single letters. So we're on S, then we've broke that down into 100 by 100 kilometer square, which is SX. Um, and then we've determined that each two letter square, SX, SR, whatever it may be, is then further broken down into numbers zero to 100 for each square. So, yeah, we've got now our double letter squares. So each one of these squares is 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers broken down. Um, so zero to 100 and zero to 100. So each one of those squares obviously is one kilometer by one kilometer. Now this would be your first of what you will actually use, a four digit grid reference. So a four digit grid reference will give you an accuracy of one kilometer by one kilometer square. Now your map will not start at zero or end in 100 necessarily. Um, so what they actually do is say, That's the south of England. Very bad drawing, I know. But, so, they will break the map down. There'll be one map here. There'll be one map here. One map here. And these are individually numbered. So, Dartmoor is OS map number 28. But obviously, you can see, because this starts halfway down the SX square or the grid, then obviously the numbers are going to start at about 50 odd. Um, I'll just confirm that. Yep, so Northings and Dartmoor go from uh, SX 55 to SX 96, and Eastings um, from SX 48 
to SX80. So, although a little bit of confusion on a larger scale, you're only going to be looking at your map. So, basically everything I've just said, although not really relevant for reading one particular map, is, is good knowledge to have. Um, you, you understand how, how the whole system works. Right, now onto the fun stuff, actually map reading. Right, so now, hopefully, after that, um, admittedly a bit boring um, little section of the video, you now understand the process of where a map comes from, how it's divided, and that hopefully will become useful to you at some stage. Now, let's move on to the actual individual map. So, without further ado, grid references. Right now, grid references, as we explained earlier, then we go along the corridor, we go up the stairs. So all what we undertook earlier was a two-figure grid reference, uh, using obviously the northings and the eastings. Now, grid references, uh, two-figure, not out of, because all maps or OS maps at least um, are that they are two numbers on each so all the northings are two numbers and all the eastings are two numbers so a four figure grid reference is is the very basic one um, so if we look at this Now, we're going to say that these are grid lines on the Dartmoor map, which we know is SX. So, for example, on Dartmoor, then the northings, um, we're going to say started at 55, aren't we? So, we're going to go 55. So, that's telling us, because we know the map starts there, um then we are in the very very bottom left hand corner of the map because it's the origin of the northings and the origin of the eastings now let's get a grid reference so these are one kilometer by one kilometer squares so if we just want a square random one uh, blah, 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 blah. let's go there shall we right yeah happy with that now, so this square, remember, along the corridor and up the stairs. So this square, along the corridor, five, zero. Yep, so five, zero. And then we go up the stairs. So five, seven. Five, seven. So the grid reference of that square, that whole square is 5057 right? but that gives you literally that whole square which is one kilometer by one kilometer so it's still a pretty big area so now what we need to do is we need to narrow it down right? we, we need to become more accurate so if we've gone from 100 kilometers then the squares are divided into one kilometers if we divide each of these squares by 10 again, then what do you think we're gonna get? 100 meters. If you said that correct, well done, that's off. All right, so each one of these squares is now divided into 100 meters by 100 meters. So 10 by 10. I know that's not 10, but it's an example, All right? So now if we want a more accurate reading, then what we do, is say for example let's pick this that dot there so we need to go along the corridor again so five zero now how far along is that dot within that square if we say that that's the halfway point right i'm going to say about so obviously if this is divided up into ten i'm going to say it's about three yeah, if that's five, that's about three. All right, so five, zero, three. Now, this is a six figure grid reference, which again, like I said, is accurate to 100 meters or 100 meters. 
Now we've gone along the corridor, so now let's go up the stairs. So our baseline on our uh, northing is 55. But if that's the halfway point, let's say three again for easy numbers, all right? So five, five, and then divide that, so it's three. Five, five, three. So now our six figure grid reference, which is accurate to 100 meters by 100 meters of this particular dot there is five, three, five, five, three. So now we're at 100 meters by 100 meters, still not massively accurate, but it's a lot better than 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers. So we're getting there now, aren't we? We're getting accurate. So if the six figure is accurate to 100 by 100 square meters, then obviously each one of those 100 meter by 100 meter squares, then to go into an eight figure is divisible by 10 on both ways. So that would give you an accuracy of 10 meters by 10 meters. So let's see, six figure, grid reference 100 by 100 meter square yep so eight figure grid reference is 10 by 10 meters and so if we were to go up to a 10 figure grid reference Then, what do you reckon it'd be? Yeah, you got it. So it will be one meter by one meter. So uh, just to um, just to show you on a actual map, because that's obviously what we're trying to learn. Uh, the whiteboard is all very good and well for basics, but uh, obviously seeing it on a map would be a lot easier. So we have these numbers here and this is Dartmoor, this is just down from uh, this uh, Fern Ravi area over here, um, if you're familiar with the moors. But basically, so these lines here, uh, these numbers rather, are your Eastings, because they are those lines that are adventuring this way towards the east, which make them Eastings. Uh, these lines here, obviously are going towards the north so they're northing so these numbers are northing numbers so let's say that we want to get a grid reference of this tinner's hut now this tinner's hut obviously first of all we have to come along the corridor you know or on the eastings so that if we follow it down we can see 61 and i am reckoning that that is about two out of the 10 divisions so 612 and northings is 82 and i'm reckoning that is just under halfway of these two lines so out of the 10 Halfway would obviously be five, so we're going to go four. So we're going to go six, one, two, eight, two, four. Right now, a more accurate way, and we're going to bring the compass in here. So um, rather than just doing it by eye, which to be fair is fine for you, you know a rough little bit of work or, or getting somewhere near, but on your compass you do actually have a scale but obviously it depends on the scale of your map so 1 to 25k uh, k obviously short for a thousand so 1 to 25,000 which this particular map is orange OS maps are 1 to 25,000 pink OS maps are 1 to 40,000 other makes of maps can be 1 in 50,000 so on this compass, we have one to 25,000, we have one to 50,000, and we have one to 40,000. So if I align zero, which is obviously here, with 
the edge of a grid line, you will see zero and 10 aligns with that. It is split into 10 components. Everything, grids, right from the very beginning from 500 kilometer squares, all the way down is divided by 10, divided by 10, divided by 10. This is the metric system. So if you're half familiar with maths, you, you kind of understand everything's divided by 10. So we went for this tennis hut here. Let's have a look. So if we put zero on here, it's actually it's it's 1.5, it's not two, even though I said six one two. So you can it's close enough, but not not dead accurate. This is why you should use your compass. Um and here, Tinder's Hut, I did say eight two four and to be fair, we're bang on 824. So I was close, but it just goes to show just that use of the compass on that scaling will give you a lot further accurate grid reference than just eyeing it in. So another quick example um, of taking grid reference because hopefully with everything you know, we've covered so far, um, you should be able to see this. It's, it's quite safe, self-explanatory once you know your Eastings and your Northings um, or along the corridor and up the stairs. So let's say Tabby Head, for example, shall we? So Tabby Head, and you, you'll notice that's, that's bang on the grid line. So, um, or on the Northing grid line, we'll just call it grid line, it's easier. Uh, five, nine, five, I reckon. Um, because I would say that's pretty much bang on halfway, but we will check with the compass scale in a minute. Uh, so 595 and 82 is the northing, and because we're bang on it, it will be 820. All right, because to, there's obviously no information, there's no one, two, three, whatever, it is on the line, so it's 820, because then that will form a six-figure grid reference, which is 595820. Right, hopefully you've uh, you've grasped that okay, and now we shall move on to the legend of the map. And I don't mean legend as in some spooky tale, I mean legend as in a index. The legend, um, also I'm not going to cover every single thing on here. <laughs> this, is, this is up to you to actually have a look and, and try and retain to memory as much as you possibly can. You're not going to know everything, but it's, uh, it's impossible to remember the whole lot. But if you can just remember the basics, so you know they, they, these are really, really important. Um, by the way, footpaths, you, you know, because that's generally a lot of the time when you're navigating what you're going to be aiming for or walking on. Um, either way, you need to recognize them quickly. You can, of course, just refer back to the map every single time, then you take a bearing or you're trying to figure somewhere out. But t t the time that takes is ridiculous, so just try and learn it. Um, and it will aid you massively. A uh, very important one, Dartmoor especially, firing area. Um, that is uh, up on the North Moors. Uh, there is a lot of tours that have poles on top of them. If that pole has a red flag on, that means that the military are doing live firing. Do not enter that zone for obvious reasons. Um, another important one which I use very, very regularly, and you can cross them a lot on Dartmoor, is the wall. Um, now, wall is a solid black line. Um, also, you've got this whole section here. Now, this whole section um, depicts very specific things. So, you've got BP is boundary post, BS is boundary stone. CG is castle grid, it, you know, um, different types of churches, um, lighthouse, disused lighthouse, a beacon. So it can get very, very specific. You don't need to know everything on here, but the ones that you think you will commonly use, and I would suggest, say, different types of paths, by the ways, roads, walls, 
boundary stones it can come in you know for, for fair handy now and again um good also then the ground types so here we have a section vegetation this is very 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 useful um you will probably if you've got any kind of common sense figure out if you see a big green area on a map um with pictures of trees it's gonna be a wood in it yeah all right we've, uh, <laughs> we've, uh, we're, we're not teaching to suck eggs here like you know but different types of coniferous tree non-coniferous tree a coppice obviously a small woodland and then the ground so here we have little tufts and here we have little tufts if they are of a brownie type color then they just indicate rough brown baby's heads you know that tufty kind of the open moorland basically if they got blue in them then they are potentially marshy or boggy crowns so it's definitely something to take note of because you do not want to get stuck in a bog from Dartmoor. Now the next um, section I'd just like to cover quickly because I will come on to it in more detail later is contour lines. I personally believe these are massively underrated and people don't seem to use them um, when they can be such a good aid. So basically contour lines are these orangey brownie lines you see literally everywhere. They depict the height, elevation, the steepness, the, the contour of the land, hence the reason why they are called contour lines. And if you can read these, you can quite easily turn this two-dimensional map into a three-dimensional image within your head, which will aid you greatly with navigation. So let's say, for example, we're following this recreational route here, very easy path we, we know from the legend that we learned earlier that this path basically is a, is a road for feet you know you're not going to stray off of that but you decide that you want to visit butter down hill and then you want to nip over to beacon rocks and check out the cairn and stuff here so we've got bearings and stuff which again we will come on to later but in terms of contours you get to this corner and you can see i don't know if you will pick it up on the camera but that one says 330 uh so that one's 340 that one says 350 so that they are in 10 meter elevation increments so you can tell by this that you're going to go uphill to butter than hill then if you want to skirt across to beacon rocks then you're going to go downhill and then back uphill there's a valley in between or a coombe whatever you would like to terminology uh, whatever your terminology is um as you can see there's a river in there so th this is all about is about deciphering what the map shows you in using that to your advantage so rather than just take a bearing which again we'll come on to you later but taking a bearing from there to there and just walking on your bearing then you can also think well i know i've got to go downhill i know i will hit a river or a brook or whatever size waterway that may be then i will go uphill also because you know the consoles are showing you that you're going down and there is a river at the bottom that could well be wet area so i so say just all these little things the more you know the map the more you pay attention to what the map is telling you the better off you will be in navigation and in terms of deciding your route <laughs> 